Alrighty, welcome back everyone, it's Garland here bringing you another Neverwinter video. In today's guide we are going to be going over the Relic Armor, uh, the Vivified Relic Armor, and then at the very end we're going to talk about the Relic Weapons as well. Uh, as we all know by now, um, you can get your Relic Armor in only one place. Uh, you can get the boots from the Heroic events in Bryn Shander. Uh, now your arms, your chest plate, and your helmet, however, are only they're only going to drop out of Fangbreaker Island. It's the only place in the game to get the actual relic pieces. I, of course, am still missing my chest plate. Even after about 85 runs of Fangbreaker, the chest piece that I need just simply won't drop. Uh, for the relic armor, every class in the game has two sets. Um, if we look at the collections and go to your storm crings and go down to the relic armor as I said each each class in the game has two sets so for the warlock for instance I have the raid and I have the assault so once you get your boots from doing your heroics once you get all your pieces from doing fangbreaker you have the chance now to actually vivify it. Now the process of vivifying is not very hard guys. Uh, it does take some bone and blood and it takes an ornate carving. Now the question is is where to get these ornate carvings and the answer is is that the carvings only drop in Sorborg. Uh, master version of course so MSVA you can only get one a week. It is equivalent to getting the resin, which you need to restore your relic gear. If you remember, you can get an Astorian resin uh, from doing Fangbreaker uh, once a week. And you needed X amount of resin to actually restore your original relic gear. So it's basically the same process for the vivified, or the vivification rather. Uh, you simply get the uh, ornate carving, which by the way doesn't appear anywhere in your inventory. The, in the, inor the <laughs> ornate carving doesn't appear in your professions tab, it doesn't appear in your inventory, it's, it's nowhere. There's only one place you can view to see how many carvings you have, and that's the vendor that you need to talk to. So as far as the vivification process goes, like I said, you do need the ornate carving. So you need to come to Bryn Shandor, which we are here. Uh, the relic vendor is going to be right here. And right behind it is going to be the Astorian, Astorian Historian. <laughs> Try saying that ten times fast. Astorian Historian. But simply talk to him and he will give you a brief history about, you know, the Astorian carvings. Now if we do take a look here, this is the only place where you'll be able to see how many that you have. And you can see there are four different tombs here. Uh, and basically, the volume one is going to be for your helmet. So if you do MSVA once and have one you can actually turn it in for the volume one and get your helmet vivified the chest piece is going to take you three so that's three weeks the arms and the boots are both going to be two weeks each so it's a total of eight weeks it's going to take you eight weeks to vivify all of your armor and to vivify it, it's very simple. Uh, I think my arms are the only piece I don't have vivified. So you'll go down to your relic arms, you hit restore, and it will tell you what you need. Like I said, you will need uh, one of the volumes. You get the volumes by the carvings, which I just showed you. And then you will need X amount of bone and blood as well. And then that will yield you the vivified gear, which comes at 155. Uh, but once you fully empower it, it will go up to 160. For instance, my, you know, vivified helmet and my vivified boots are both item level 160. Uh, the only downfall is that they didn't increase the combat time. So even if you get vivified all the way to tier 3, it's still only going to be a 2 hour upkeep time. Which sucks, you know, you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna need it. 
Uh, now, some people have decided to totally skip Mod 10 at all. They didn't go for any relic armor. They didn't, you know, they're not going for their relic weapons. Uh, they don't want anything to do with the campaign. They, they just boycotting Mod 10. Uh, now, that is fine. They did add new items in the game. Uh, and some of these items, surprisingly, uh, the statistics on them are a viable source uh, and comparable to Relic Armor. Uh, for instance, the Harl's Gaze, which is only item level 150. Uh, if you look at the statistics on it, however, it's pretty nice. Uh, the actual bonus from it, we don't really care about. Uh, it's the 20 power for every Everfrost resistance you have, but it's only active in Everfrost zones, unfortunately. Uh, but if you look at the statistics on it and compare it to the actual vivified gear, uh, so yeah, you're going to lose Everfrost Resist, you're going to lose a lot of HP, uh, but you're going to gain a decent amount of power. Uh, so, you know, you're looking at 500, 600 power gain, and then you're going to lose uh, some critical strike, as there is only two statistics on the Harl's Gaze. But, I mean, if you're a class that needs power, for instance, we're going to take a look at my Cleric, um, the Harl's Gaze might be better than actual vivified relic armor. And there's, like I said, uh, just a select handful of new items that they put in the game that are going to be like that. For instance, we can look at the Historian's Regalia. Uh, well, the Harl's Gaze, by the way, comes out of Master version of Swordboard. And the Historian's Regalia comes out of the normal version of Swordboard. But if we do take a look at the Historian's Regalia, it is item level 160. And the statistics on it aren't that bad. Like I said, I don't have my relic chest piece yet, which I do plan on using. However, it's all a statistic game, so you need to balance your statistics. If you don't need the power and you need the crit, the Historian's Regalia has 2,000 critical strike base on it, as well as 1,300 recovery and some defense and some decent HP. The only downfall is the AC bonus, where most pieces are going to have 7 or 8 AC. This one only has 1. But as a caster, I shouldn't be getting hit. However, as my play style, I am kind of in the fray. So the downfall to the Historian's Regalia is the 1 AC on it. Uh, if I did need crit strike, you know, the 2,000 crit strike and the 1,300, almost 1,400 recovery, I mean, you can't, you can't really pass it up. So it depends on your class. It depends on your play style. It depends on what statistics you actually need still. So if you do want to avoid the relic armor, there are other options out there. Uh, for instance, if we look at the Dreadnought, it's only item level 150. However, if you look at the stats... I should actually be using this most likely over my Elemental Dragonflight, but like I said, I am going for the Relic Armor. I will get it eventually. Uh, however, like I said, the Dreadnought, I mean, it's almost 1800 power defense and it does have life still on it. So I'm going to lose Crit Strike and I'm going to lose Armor Pen if I would choose this uh, chest plate. But like I said, it's all about statistics and what I currently need. So, options, guys. They actually gave us options. Uh, once again, we have the Life Silk Spinneret, uh, which drops out of Epic Temple of the Spiders. And once again, it has decent statistics on it. It's, you know, almost 1500 power and it's almost 1500 recovery. It's a very valid chess piece for certain classes and for certain play styles. And then finally, we do have the Blake at, Blake, Black Ice Treads uh, that drop out of Kessel's Retreat. Uh, now these aren't really something that I would be interested in. You would have to really want these. Um, uh, basically, it's just it's fifteen hundred recovery. Basically, on these, I would prefer something with power on it. Uh, but I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about for you guys and what you guys need. So if you're interested in recovery, it's something to look into. Like fifteen hundred recovery is a lot of recovery, um, rather than a split stat gear. Uh, like, for instance, if we look at my Dragonflight boots, which was almost 700 power, uh, almost 1,000 armor pen, and then some defense uh, for what I was using, that w I would probably take the Black Ice over the Elemental Dragonflight just for the recovery fact alone, because I can make up the other statistics elsewhere. So, that's just a little little tidbit you know you guys might want to look into some of this armor it is a little better 
But like I said, that is going to be your relic armor, how to vivify your relic armor. Uh, like I said, basic rundown is you can get your relic armor from Fangbreaker Island. The boots come from the heroic encounters from Bryn Shinder. And then after you restore your relic armor, you can vivify it. You just have to do, you know, once a week uh, Master Sword Borg to get the Astorian carvings. And then you can vivify it. Now let's very quickly talk about the relic weapons. Uh, they are going to be best in Splot, most likely for most DPS classes. However, support classes might not want to get these, uh, as the bonus isn't that good. And we know that new artifact weapons will be coming out in the next module. Uh, Mod 11 will have better suited weapons for support classes like DCs and Guardian Fighters. But it's going to be totally up to you guys and what you want to do. Uh, the grind for these is insane. Uh, you do have to farm Master Sword and Board. Uh, and you have, there are three different type of marks. Uh, there's three chests in there. Each mark comes out of a chest. And then there's also three ranks of each mark. So you have your blue, your rare, uh, your purple, your epic, and then your orange for your legendary. Uh, and you can only use those specific marks to upgrade uh, said um, relic weapons. Uh, you will get your relic weapons for free once you finish the storyline from 10.5, the Sea of Moving Ice. And then once you do, in fact, restore them, uh, then you can start working on them to upgrade them. But the marks is definitely the downfall. The grind is just unreal. Uh, I believe it took me 112 total runs uh, to get my marks. Uh, you need 15 uh, of each kind for one, so you need 30 total for your weapon and offhand. So you need 30 blue marks, you need 30 uh, purple marks, and you need... Or I'm sorry, what am I saying? <laughs> you need 30 total marks, guys. You need 10 of each kind. So you need 10 blue, 10 purple, and 10 orange. Each one takes 5. So you need 5 uh, blue, purple, and orange for the weapon, and you need 5 for the offhand as well. Five blue, purple, and orange. For a total of 15 each, or a total of 30 for both. Uh, and the drop rate is, it's not very good. Like I said, it took me 112 runs. It's taken some people a little less. It's taken some people a little more. Uh, I would average to say anywhere from 100, 110, 120. Uh, I think one person even has done about 128 runs or something, close to 130 runs, and they're still missing a few of their legendary marks. So if you want to put the time and the effort and the AD into getting your weapons, that is totally up to you. If you want to wait till Mod 11 and play that gamble, that's up to you. Uh, but the Relic weapons are definitely going to be best in slot for just about every DPS class. So that's going to wrap it up for the Relic Armor. Um, very quickly, I just want to hop over to my Cleric and show you guys what I am doing over there. Uh, as it is on topic with the armor. So let's hop on to the Cleric. As always, if you guys have any questions, be sure to leave a comment below on the how to get your relic gear, how to vivify your relic gear, uh, anything to do with Sovereign Borg, uh, the marks, the legendary marks, the relic weapons, how to restore them. If you guys have any questions at all, be sure to leave a comment below as always. But let's get on the cleric right here, and I want to show you guys what I'm doing and what I currently feel is actually almost best in slot, to be honest. Uh, if we look at my cleric, he is looking like a complete and utter badass. <laughs> like, I'm really liking his uh, setup right now as far as his fashion and dyes go. And yeah, I just wanted to gloat a little about that. Alright, so if we're looking at a cleric, now my cleric is 100% buff debuff. So yes, I am using the Harl's Gaze. Uh, I don't have any intentions of doing any of mod 10 on my cleric. Uh, if they come out with the campaign that you can buy it out eventually down the road, I will. However, as far as the relic gear goes, I'm not getting it. I'm not getting his relic weapons. I'm not getting his relic gear. Uh, I think for a pure buff debuff cleric, 
uh, the Harl's Gaze is going to be best in slot. Uh, you can't pass up the almost 1900 power off of it. I don't even know what the Relic Gear gives the Cleric, but it's not 1900 power. Uh, so I'm going to use this for as long as possible. That's going to be the same with the Life Silk Spinneret that we talked about. It's 1400 power and 1400 recovery plus some defense. Uh, in my eyes, that's pretty much best in slot. It, it's, it has to be better than the Relic Gear in my eyes. Uh, especially because, like I said, for instance, I'm not getting the Relic Gear on this character. Um, so the 1400 power, 1400 recovery, well, it's almost 1500 each. Um, you can't pass it up. And then another little gem that I didn't show you guys because I only have one of them. Uh, is the Survivor's Wraps. Uh, it doesn't have any other statistics on it other than power, but look at the power, guys. It's almost 3,000 power on these arms alone. Um, so just from these three pieces, you know, that's a great deal of power. Now, anyone that plays a buff debuff cleric knows that power is everything. It's all about the power share through Anointed Army. Uh, so you want to have the highest possible base power that you can because that's what AA goes off of. Um, so yeah, these are all currently best in slot in my eyes. There's no doubt about it. The Harl's Gaze, uh, the Life Silk Spinneret, uh, and the Survival's Wraps. Now you could substitute the Spinneret for the actual Dreadnought, which has more power on it. However, I do like the 1400 uh, recovery on this one. So the power recovery over the pure power. So if you want to go even farther, uh, further with your, with your actual base power, you could substitute this for the Dreadnought. Uh, the only thing I'm missing is my boots, and I'm just rocking the Dragonflight because, you know, it's almost a 1,000 power recovery. I don't even have them elemental. Uh, like I said, I could swap on those Black Ice Trends, but that's only recovery on it, so I'd be lacking the power, and I want to stack as much power as I can. So unless I can find something, uh, the Relic Boots, for instance, actually come out of HEs, uh, so I wouldn't have to do Fang Breaker, I would just have to do HE. so if you know, it's something to look into, I might just use the Relic Boots, uh, but yeah. So the, you know, the gear that they actually did come out with uh, does have its place. Uh, if you know how to properly use it. So the choice is going to be, you know, on you guys. What kind of statistics you need. What, you know, your character needs. If you want to go for the Relic Gear. If you want to go through the Vivified Process. That's going to be up to you guys. If you want to get your Relic Weapons. That's going to be up to you guys. Uh, but that's going to be all for the video today. Uh, we'll see you in the next one. Like I said, if you have any comments, uh, concerns, you know, just drop them below. Alright guys.